Welcome back. We are kicking off another holiday baking series courtesy of King Arthur Baking School and Kristen Suzuki is here to walk us through a chocolate babka wreath. I have to say this sounds amazing. It's going to be so good. All right, so you start with the dough, I assume. Yes. All right, so where do you go with that? All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we have our lemon zest and sugar mm -hmm. in a bowl. We're just going to use our fingers, just work in that zest. Okay. We're making just a lemony sugar here. And why is it important to work it together? Just to give it a head start. Uh -huh. We're a little more efficient with our fingers than the mixer is with the paddle. So we're gonna go ahead and put this into our mixing bowl. Uh -huh. We're gonna be using a mixer today, a stand mixer. However, if you don't have a stand mixer, uh -huh. you can absolutely do this by hand. You'll Some just, elbow grease. Yep. <laughs> It'll take you a few minutes of kneading it on the counter, but yep. it is not a deal breaker if you don't have a mixer. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna grab <laughs> that. Perfect. And I'm just gonna add my yeast too. So uh -huh. this is instant yeast. That's uh -huh. what we're using today. You can also use active dry yeast. You don't have to soak the active dry yeast anymore these days. It's pretty oh, much okay. exactly like instant yeast. And you just throw that right in okay. with your flour and your sugar. Perfect. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a mix. Yeah, just the head start you mentioned. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this onto my stand mixer and put my paddle on. You typically don't see a paddle being used with bread. You usually yeah, I was use say, a I bread use a dough. dough hook, which yeah. we'll get to later. <laughs> yeah, but we do just a quick mix with the paddle, just because, again, we're trying to bring everything together, and sometimes this doesn't catch yeah. everything in the beginning. So I'm just gonna let that mix for a little bit, and make sure that everything gets fully incorporated evenly. All right, so once you've got it mixed, what's next? Yeah, so I'm gonna turn that off. That was going for about a minute. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my eggs, water, and salt. Mm -hmm. So my salt is in my eggs already. I just mm -hmm. add it right in there. Perfect. Drop those in. That and was if, three eggs. Yeah, and if people are wondering about amounts, that is where the recipe online will help you. That's on the King Arthur Baking Company's website. So you can find all the amounts you'll need for the recipe there. Mm -hmm. This is my water. And that's just a room temperature water. The, mm -hmm. the different thing about this dough is it's actually going to be an overnight fermentation. Okay. And so we're not really worried about the speed at which that happens. So we're not going to be using warm water. Mm -hmm. It's just room temperature water. Which actually helps if people want to kind of space out their baking. Mm -hmm. They don't have to do it all in one day. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna put this back onto the mixer. And we're gonna let that go for about five minutes. It's a pretty low speed. Mm -hmm. I just wanna bring everything together. It's gonna be really dry and shaggy. And that's fine. Yeah, that's fine in the beginning. Once I have everything together, then I'm just gonna turn it up slightly. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's been about five minutes. Yeah, so our dough's been going for about five minutes, and because it's a yeasted dough, we really don't want to turn the mixer up too high. So when it says medium speed, it's really more like a lower speed on your mixer. So that was like on speed two. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and switch now to the dough hook. Ta-da. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, add our butter. So we tend to use unsalted butter here, mm -hmm. but if you have salted butter, you could use salted butter. Um, this dough could actually use a little more salt. The reason why we don't add the butter in the beginning with the rest of the ingredients is because too much fat in a yeasted dough really does sort of hinder the gluten formation. Interesting. So we wanna build up a nice gluten structure before we add all of the butter. And we're going to add that slowly to incorporate it actually more quickly. So I'm going to turn this on. Again, a low, a pretty low speed. Yes. Yeah. This is room temperature butter, so it's pretty soft. Yeah. And I just am going to throw little chunks of butter in, uh -huh. one at a time. Not all at once, but you don't have to wait for that last piece to be fully incorporated before you add another piece. You just don't want to add it too quickly because it actually becomes a little more difficult if you're mm -hmm. adding too much fat all at once. It's been about 10 minutes, you said the dough's ready? Yeah. So our dough's ready now. 
We'll go ahead and take it off. We can take a look at. How, what, how do you tell when the dough is ready? Right? Yeah, so our butter has been completely incorporated. It's smooth. I'm gonna kind of form it into a little ball here. And now if someone's dough comes out and they're like, this doesn't look like this, they can call the helpline, right? And get some assistance yeah. from King Arthur. So the great thing about King Arthur is we have a baker's hotline and it's open seven days a week and um, nine to five, I believe. Yeah. So you can't call them at midnight. <laughs> um, but they get are- your baking projects done during business hours. Yes, business hours. <laughs> they are um, absolutely wonderful. They have a lot of experience and they can help you through give you advice and uh, try and troubleshoot if you're having issues. But hopefully your dough will look like this. It's nice and smooth. Um, doesn't look dry anymore. Now what we're gonna do is do an overnight proof. So I have, I'm just gonna use the same bowl. I'm yep. not gonna go and wash it. I'm just gonna give a quick spray with some pan spray. You can use butter or something else just to kind of help it not stick. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to place the dough in there. Maybe turn it over once to kind of get the grease on both sides. But I want to try and keep it in this nice little ball. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to cover it with plastic. Sometimes in recipes you'll see cover it with a towel. A towel is not airtight. It is still porous and it allows the air to penetrate and get to the dough. So the goal, especially when you're doing overnight, it's a very extended period in the fridge. So if you don't cover it with something that will keep it airtight, it will dry out. And then it goes in the fridge overnight. Yep. Perfect. Well, I'm already craving some Babka, and if you are too, you're in luck. Our Babka baking demos continue all week. Tomorrow, Kat and Kristen show us how to make the filling and the glaze for your chocolate Babka wreath. Then on Thursday, we'll assemble the Babka, and on Friday, we'll bake and glaze the final product. You can see all that right here on the Channel 3 News, first at 4.